Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my Sheep Hears My Voice Ministries. In Psalms 34 and 3, the Word of God says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Let us glorify his name together. Let's give him all the glory, honor, and praise that he so deserved together. Let's lift his name up together. Today, my central lesson is going to be a carnal plan for God's spiritual plan. Today, I will be, I will be coming from Genesis chapter chapter 15, 1 through 6, and Genesis chapter 16, 1 through 6. In Genesis chapter 15, God promised Abraham an heir. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. So right here, God was encouraging Abraham. He was letting Abraham know, I am thy shield. A shield protects so God was letting Abraham know, I'm going to protect you, and I'm your exceedingly great reward. I will be rewarding you, Abraham. I'm going to reward you. Now, in Genesis 15, 2 and 3, Abraham responded back to God with a question and a concern. So let's see what Abraham had to say. And Abraham said, Lord God, what will, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliza of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is my heir. So what was Abraham talking to the Lord about? Abraham was saying, Lord, this is my concern. You haven't given me any children. And the one that's born in my house, one of my servants, that's going to be my heir. And that was bothering Abraham. So let's see what God responds was to Abraham's question. Genesis chapter 15 and 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be, that, shall be thine heir. So what was God's response to Abraham's question? He told Abraham, your servant is not going to be your heir. You will bring a son forth from your own body. That's going to be your heir. I'm going to give you a son. I'm going to give you a son. And he told Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, God said, and he brought forth, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look, now toward the heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. So what was the Lord saying to Abraham? He brought him forth. He said, come on outside, Abraham, and look up towards the heavens. And count the stars if you can. Now, something in this scripture, it caught my attention. In Genesis chapter 15 and 5, God told Abraham, now look up towards the heavens. And God is saying to us right now today, look up and don't hold your head down. Continue to look up. Even Jesus looked up. When Jesus blessed the five loaves and the two fish, the first thing Jesus did was he looked up towards the heavens. So what is God saying? Look up and don't look down because I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. In Genesis chapter 15 and 6, and he believed in the Lord and the Lord counted, to, counted it to him for righteousness. So the Lord counted, it, counted Abraham righteous because he believed in the Lord. He believed what the word of the Lord came and when the Lord said to him, the word of the Lord came to Abraham and told him, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. And Abraham believed the Lord. He believed the Lord when the Lord told him that he was going to bring a son forth from his own bowels, from his own body, that that was going to be his heir. Now, if we go to chapter Genesis chapter 16, now we're going into a carnal plan for God's spiritual plan. Genesis chapter 16 and 1. Now Sarah, Abram's wife, bore him no children. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her a carnal plan for God's spiritual plan. 
and Abram hearkened unto the voice of Sarah. Now that's where Abraham went wrong. Because if we go back into Genesis chapter 15 and 5, 4 and 5, God promised Abraham an heir. He told Abraham that he was going to bring, a, bring forth a child from his own bowels. But then when we get over to Genesis chapter 16, here comes Sarah trying to make do things her way outside of God's will. Just like Eve did in the Garden of Eden, she brought that fruit to her husband and both of them fell. So God, in Genesis chapter 15 and 16, Sarah wanted to do things her way. In Ephesians 5 and 23, the word of God says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Now the Lord spoke with Abraham. He didn't speak with Sarah. That's why it's very important for the saints to line up with God's way of running a household. And the homes, and the churches, and the businesses, whatever they're doing together. Because God will direct the head if he's following Christ. And that's what happened in this situation. God directed Abraham. He came to Abraham and spoke to Abraham and told Abraham that he was going to bring a son forth from his own bowels. He didn't tell Sarah. So when Sarah came to Abraham and wanted to use Hagar, which was, which was her maid, to start a family, that's when Abraham was supposed to stand up and say, look, God and I already directed me and told me that I was going to bring a, a son forth, an heir forth from my own bowels. And I'm not going to do this, Sarah. I'm not going to do it. But what did Abraham do? He hearkened unto his wife's voice. Let's see what happened after Abraham hearkened to his wife's voice. And, and Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram, and dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. Now it's been ten years. I'm getting ready to, Sarah, I'm getting ready to start my family. I want a child now. God taking too long. A carnal plan for God's spiritual plan. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her, in her eyes. So now here come the trouble. Because now that Hagar, her maid, conceived the son with Abraham, now she started looking down on Sarah. Yeah, I, ha I had a son with Abraham, and you couldn't do it. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with your body? A carnal plan for God's spiritual plan. And Sarah said unto Abraham, My wrong be upon thee. Now Sarah admit, she's starting to feel that wrath that comes when you step outside of God's will. I have given my maid into thy bosom. I, given her, I have given my maid into your arms. I asked you to come together with my maid and conceive a child outside of God's will. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. Now she don't like me. Now that I've let you come together with my maid and y'all bring forth a child, now she looked down on me like she want me out of here. Now, now she want me to go. And I'm the wife and she's the maid. She despises me now. She looked down on me like something is wrong with me now. But Abraham said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth. She fled from the and she fled from her face. So what happened right here? When we step outside of God's will and we want to do it our way, there's consequences. There's problems that's going to come up in our lives because we choose to do things our way instead of the way that God wanted it done. Sarah said to Abraham, look, the Lord have kept me from having children. Listen, Abraham, hook up with my maid and we getting ready to start our family. Now, back in Genesis chapter 15, God had already told Abraham his plan and gave him a promise. Okay, 
in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. God knows how he want to bless us. God knows the time and the seasons that he has planned things out to come forth in our lives. But we want to do it our way. We want things done our way, and that's just that, and we want it now. We don't want to wait on it. God might, God has a time set the way he want to bless us. But we have a time set the way we want it to happen, the way we think it should happen, and the way God should work in our life. We know the answers. We bigger than God. We know how, how it should come forth and how God should do it. We want to tell God how it's done. And that's a lot of prop. That's a lot of times where we go wrong at when we want to show God how to work His plan out. And that's what was happening right here. Sarah wanted to work God's plan out. Since He was taking too long, Sarah felt like I'm gonna do it my way. I want to do it my way. So when she done that, jealousy set in, hatred set in, all of those types of things set in between her and her maid because now. Two women and one man. And we all know how that happened. We know how that goes. Two women and one man. Two women coming together. And Abraham, Abram at that time, he wasn't Abraham. Abram trying to satisfy his wife through his maid. And that was the problem. In Numbers 23 and 19, the word of God says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and he will not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? God is not a man that he should lie. He told Abraham that he was going to give him an heir from his own body. He didn't tell Sarah. Again, he told Abraham the head. Abraham was the head. But Sarah still wanted to do. Sarah wanted to do it her way. She wanted to do bring her family forth the way she wanted to bring her family forth. She was anxious. She couldn't wait. I want it now. Do it now, God. If you don't, I'm going to do it my way. If God said he's going to do it, it will come to pass. That doesn't mean he's going to do it today. It doesn't mean he's going to do it tomorrow. But it will come to pass. In Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forevermore. God don't change like we do. God don't change. He's not going to tell Abraham, I'm going to give you an heir. And then two weeks later, no, Abraham, I, I didn't say that. Uh -uh, I don't remember saying that. God is not like that. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change. He don't have three and four and five and six and seven, eight, nine, ten different personalities. God is the same. And that's one of the things that I love about the Lord. You can count on him. Because once he tell you something, it's set. When we, don't pay, when we don't obey God's voice and listen to other voices, because Abraham listened to his wife, he listened to her voice. Hurtful and difficult situations came about. Hurtful and difficult situations came about. It hurted Sarah to see Hagar have a son with her husband, Abram. That hurted her. But she would have never had to experience that hurt had she submitted up under her husband and waited on God. She would have never had to experience that hurt. John 10 and 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So what is God saying? My sheep, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Sarah's voice was not the Lord's voice because she was telling Abraham to do something outside of what God had already promised Abraham. He should have stood up as head of household and told Sarah no. Through all this, everything that was going on, the little boy Ishmael, that, that was Hagar's son, that was his name, suffered. He had to sit back and watch Sarah and his mom, and his father Abram, his dad Abram, in all of this confusion that they had going on in the household, he's sitting back watching this. 
Now, he didn't ask to be born into this confusion. He didn't ask to be born into this baby mama drama. But he, that's what it was, baby mama drama. Because Sarah was Abram's wife. Hagar was his maid. Sarah had no right to tell Abram to go in into, his, into her maid and bring forth a child. She thought when Hagar had that child that she was just going to pass it over to Sarah and her and Abram was going to be a happy family and they were just going to go on. But it didn't work like that because Hagar loved her son. That was her baby with Abram. And Sarah had to sit back and watch Abram and Hagar enjoy having a child together. That had to be hurtful. But that's what happens when we go outside of God's will. That's what happens when we try to change God's plan to work our plan. That's what happens when you take a carnal situation and try to fix a spiritual plan. Because it'll never work. Because you can't change anything that God has said he's going to do. If he said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. In Galatians 5 and 16, the word of God says, Then I say, walk in the spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Then I say then walk in the spirit. That's why it's very important to walk in the spirit. Because the flesh do not submit to God. The flesh want everything outside of God's will. The flesh will take you down a dangerous road. But if we walking in the spirit. If we walking in the word. If we walking in the word. Because if you go back to Genesis chapter 15 and 1, it says, After these things, the word of the Lord came into Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. So it's very important that we learn how to walk in the word of God and not listen to outside voices outside of God's word. Because that's where it gets dangerous. That's where you find yourself in pain, the hurtful situations, the difficult situations. You find yourself bankrupt and, and you find your homes and stuff in foreclosure. You find yourself in divorce court. All of these things comes when we try to find a carnal plan for God's spiritual plan. And that was my lesson on today. Let's be humble and let's wait on God. If God said he's going to do it, He's going to do it. Why? Because the word of God plainly says, as in number 23, Numbers 23 and 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and he will not do it? Did he say it and he won't do it? Why would God say he's going to do it and then don't do it? That's not God. Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? If God speak, it's going to come to pass. If God has told you something, if the Lord has promised you something, it will come to pass. If he haven't told you next Thursday, just wait on him. Wait on the Lord. And sometimes waiting on the Lord is hard because I know. Especially when you're in a hurtful and a difficult situation. Wait on God hurts. And you find yourself sometimes trying to find a way to fix it. You try to find, you try to go left, that don't work. You try to go frontwards, that don't work. You try to go backwards, that don't work. So the only other option that you have is to go right. And that's the right way in the Lord. That's, that's the only option that you have is to go right. So let's learn how to wait on God. So we won't have to experience hurtful and difficult situations and bring problems in our lives that we really don't have to experience because we're trying to fix God's plan the way we want it to go and work out the way God said he's going to do it, but we want to work out the end results. It don't work like that. We have to wait on God. And if we don't, then there's consequences. We will suffer whatever follow that decision that we made, that kind of plan that we put together. When it don't work, then you're going to feel that pain and all of the things that goes with that because you tried to take a carnal, a spiritual situation and, and fix it with a, con, with a carnal situation, and that's not going to work. And that's what my lesson was about today. 
hearkening and listening to the Lord's voice and not listening to outside voices. God put the man head of the wife, and sometimes we don't like that. But that's the way God has it set up. That's the way God wants the household ran. And sometimes, as wives, we have to submit and listen to our husbands when they're following Christ. If they're not following Christ, then all you can do is pray and ask God to deliver. But when God has your husband set over you and he's following Christ, it's very important that you submit and follow your husband because God will go to the head and not come to you sometimes for direction for that family. And that's what happened in this situation. God did go to the head. But Abram, he hearkened to his wife's voice and all of this disaster came behind it. Because that was not God's plan. And that was my lesson on today. So let's make sure that we do what thus says the Lord. And not listen to what outside voices is saying. Because it's a dangerous thing when you listen to an outside voice. Remember, the Lord says, my sheep hears my voice. So let's hear the Lord's voice. And God bless you. And I'll see you next time.